I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational. And open. I got it. I've opened our shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard! Von Borchard! Hmm? Listen! Let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Please, be my guest, mother. Mm. Ah. Ah. Well done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Oh, you old... Come on, let's go home. Biddy. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borford. You just had to pick up Von Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mordor, and now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. Ah, the mad ones. I must go find Mama. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps Sir we have Hall? some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one Sherlock of Lord Mortimer's Hall? legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Hall, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you, good sir, what brings you here?
Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. <coughs> adapt quickly, my son. To get along here like a fish in water. Would do you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider you yourself fortunate, young man. Because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. That's right. Until now, I've never been invited by Lord Mortimer. You... you won't soon forget it. Given what I've seen so far, I wish I'd been passed over. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for you. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A Cardinal? A Duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. <clears throat> are you right? Oh, psychic vision. It's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah. No one's going to find it. It's her hand. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother! No! Don't! Don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you, if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But I trusted you. No, sir. Don't. No. No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay for it. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't what worry. Did you pull that out of. <clears throat> it's getting late. Why don't Why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. That has to be like a future premonition. Because clearly, I she's definitely still have to alive. find my mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find your mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? Alright, rely on your 
exogenous occult and religious symbols as well as ancient languages and secret societies. Benefit from social culture, background in the arts, geography, and history. Being up to date with scientific knowledge and medical techniques. <coughs> Excuse me. Discreetly still items, pick blocks, and notice false just in case. Oh, well, I guess I do have to use them all. <coughs> I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam <coughs> in mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priest called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough <coughs> money, I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. <coughs> You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? I feel like this... is my mom somehow. But... <coughs> Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please, stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. <coughs> Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No. Sorry, I, I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. Opportunities. <coughs> Your skills allow you to discover hidden details. Select the object with the most suggestive of the situation in order to discover them. Opportunities do not consume effort points to access the skill required for the situation. You just need to have it unlocked. <coughs> Understanding, yeah. Validate, validate. Oh my gosh. <coughs> I'm heading off. Don't get left behind. I'm coming. Well, that I was don't my know fuck where up. We're going like this, Emily. But you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart.
feel like I should be able to go through this mail. We're gonna find out. I guess I can't. Sir, may I ask your name, please? Louis Moraz de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sir's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But Sir may rest assured we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that Sir's mother may be hiding on the island and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seem to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. <coughs> Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. No. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but, sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, I do oh, not think sir. this is how we're going to go. top it all off. You refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I've been such an idiot. Here you are. God, I don't want to be a dick like your that. Mother. You must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? Barrel's been broken for quite some time. Can I not investigate that?
sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used it. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. This chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Honey, the remedy of the gods. from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. This might just come in handy. touched for a good long time. Where are those letters? Yeah. Let's see what's hidden inside. <clears throat> The dresses in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Hmm, a letter written in an Oriental language. I have the slightest idea what it says. Too badly written, I, I can't make out the address. The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. It's the same one. See what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richet. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name. Okay. But here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think. Godoy, Godoy. Manuel Godoy. Why does the name sound so familiar? I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But I just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me.
wooden floorboard. Probably comes from this part of the wharf. The wood is slightly eaten away, of course, but it still would have been fine if it weren't smashed. I guess these are all things I gotta come back to. <coughs> You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I do. And they agree. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Zeus. Whoa. Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Dice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Oh, three blunders? Oh, snap. I bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, Your Eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew my son. I hold your mother in the highest of young. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do, exactly? Oh, I see. Yes, 
What were you talking about if you forget my reading level? Mm -hmm. So take away three of those. If you know my mother, you will understand that I cannot answer you, Your Eminence. I'm sorry, but... Do not worry, my son. I perfectly understand, and I expected nothing less from you. Discretion and secrecy are both pillars of the organizations for which we work. You are the worthy son of Sarah. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me, and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Don't worry, Your Eminence. Your secret is safe with me. You know my mother's reputation. As her son, I will defend the Derishe's word with the same fervor. Ah, I would expect nothing less. Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother will read it? Okay. I swear by the Almighty God to honor the promise that no one but my mother shall cast her gaze upon your letter. Good. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priests' safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. It's kind of like telling you, hey, look at it, because you might not get to later. Yeah, fool. Explore down here before I go upstairs. <coughs> Lies of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch, a biography of the great men. Open to Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday.
I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monsignor, His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me your hands. It's simple. George Washington, President of the United States. What? Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Moras de Richer. It is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Lord Mortimer asked me to drop everything and come find my mother, who seems to have disappeared during her stay here. Oh, I took the first boat, and here I am. I'm so sorry. Don't be, sir. It's not your fault. Seriously, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here, and he hasn't I didn't know you had to up. click both. I thought it's it was stuck. one, so I kind of stopped. Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat. Very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer. So, don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh. We shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this Holm. I saw him in my vision.
see what Washington has to say. Sir, if you don't mind, I shall stay here. Do exactly as you please, young man. Louis. Thank you for staying. Just like you, when I arrived this morning, I found out that Sarah had gone missing. I know your mother well. Don't worry. Emily is from the English branch of the Golden Order. And President Washington is in fact the leader of the Order in the United States. I, I didn't know. Sorry to have made you wait, but I didn't want to speak in front of the others. You did well. Secrecy and discretion are the pillars of our organization. If I can help in any way at all, please don't hesitate to ask, my lad. And if you have any other questions, now's the time. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. Lord Mortimer is a remarkable man. He's wealthy and his advisor to the very highly placed. Your mother is the head of the order in France. It doesn't surprise me that he asked her to come. Lord Mortimer greatly contributed to financing my electoral campaign, for example. But I want this to be clear without ever seeking to gain an advantage. And that is to his credit. Yes, you can trust him. He will do everything in his power to help you find Sarah. Mr. Washington, you seem to be very familiar with my mother. Where did you first meet her? I met Sarah during the War of Independence on American soil. She was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, and I must say that her sound advice prevented me from making some terrible mistakes. She may not be a soldier, but believe me, she deserves a statue as much as Lafayette does. Well, I didn't see that one coming. There's no doubt Mother has many secrets that are still hidden. Right. Would it be too much if I asked you a few more questions? Not at all. Go ahead. But I can't promise I'll remember everything. May I ask, when you saw each other, what did you talk about? My mother has always been fascinated by strange powers. Did she talk to you about anything like that? Yes. Her facility for discerning truths from rumor served me well. Such as preventing massacres, like the one at Salem, from happening again. Or convincing people that horsemen cannot ride around without head. <laughs> what was it that she used to say now? Keep an open and logical mind? Yes, that's it. Thank you, sir. I was hoping to speak with Lord Mortimer. At least now I have some information, thanks to you. I repeat, Lord Mortimer is a man of his word. You won't be disappointed. And I am persuaded that your mother's research is his main concern. Mother still is at the head of the Golden Order. I find it difficult to believe that she came to this island without notifying the other members. As for myself, I did not know. I am here at the request of Sir Holm, a situation regarding the Crown of England to resolve, and to see what Lord Mortimer has to propose to us. As for me, Lord Mortimer asked me here to speak about the future of America. I did not know that your mother would even be among us. In any case, no one has yet mentioned associating the Order. We haven't found many clues yet. Don't worry, Louis. I'm sure nothing bad has happened to her. Yes, I, I hope not. Careful, they're coming back. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> You seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. 
I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. Ah, uh, shit. The statue is impressive, and so are the paintings. Rubens, the Caravage, Gagnero. Lord Mortimer has very good taste, and the means to express it. No, oh, I see our young sir is a connoisseur. Yes, in my spare time. Yet, I couldn't tell you who the artist of that painting there is. I think I recognize a theme, but the style intrigues me. Saturn devouring his son. Oh, well, you wouldn't know. The artist is none other than Lord Mortimer. I thought for a long time that the painting wasn't finished, but my old friend assured me it was. Still, there's no accounting for taste. Not very conventional, but it sure does hold your attention. You'll find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. So, oh, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your room. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? Jacques Perru. A few leaves out of an old encyclopedia. Quorum guy.
Can I level up? Let's see. Johann von Wunder. Ah, Johann von Bruja. Stairs. Go to the beach. Maybe I. President George Washington. His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Okay, so it does loop back around. <coughs> Duke Manuel Godoy. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. this letter it might be about my mother's disappearance but if I open it I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust what should I do so it really is a list of French countrymen Piaggi wasn't lying wow nice room Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway
Saint Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Saturn again. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. The conversion of St. Paul by Caravaggio. It's incredible. It doesn't look like a copy, but I was sure the original was in Rome. Judith beheading Holofernes. Ironic in a way, when you know that the artist represented herself as Judith beheading her mentor, who had raped her. Golden elixir. I mean, to get that, you essentially lose one to gain two. <coughs> Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly. to go on my other half. A Byzant from the Byzantine Empire. A coin often used during the St. Louis era. to explore the bedroom. Ah. 
I have to spend them all? Hey, what's up, Frankie? By the way, you missed a, me beat Mike in full honor. It was intense. The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on adults. I can take care of her. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. 
From what I've understood, the search of de Richet's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. What a pity to lose a night at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. Nighttime stroll, Mr. President. There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. Oh, 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 he went to that room. I'm coming. Is this happening just now? Dear Monsieur de Richet, Please excuse me, but I am unable to join you at present. Oh, he's coming excuse there. me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? No. What's her name again? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Adams. Adams. I remember well, that. She is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens. I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. You don't have to pay any time he wants that rematch. I can give it to him.
My son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She's been manhandled in this small cellar. By whom? I don't know exactly. A thug, a Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary Guard. You should do something, my son. Shit. I was supposed to make sure Adams would go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. Thank you, my son. May God watch over you. Who do you think you are? Forget uh, <clears throat> it's time for multiple paths. Me, sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business. I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am. Stop. I beg you. I, I didn't mean to. Don't hit me, please, sir. Shit. Ah. If I step in, Adams might just run back to ah. her And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna ah. suffer. Damn it. What should I do? Ah. Let her go. Huh? Stay out of it, boy. Shit. <laughs> What are you playing at? I told you to mind your own business, boy. If you think you can side with this whore and then just walk away, you're out of your mind. <clears throat> ah, crap. Give me one good reason not to knock you down. I have. Uh, uh. You're not back in your slum now. You're in Lord Mortimer's home. I suggest you think carefully about what you're going to do. Don't think you're getting away with it that easily. I'm sick of all these talks. If we were in Paris, I'd send you all to the guillotine. And on top of it all, a woman telling me how I ought to behave? I won't stand for it. Oh, okay, okay, wait a minute. What? Don't tell me you're gonna defend these harlots. I believe in man. From speech comes dialogue, from dialogue, peace is born, and from peace, great destinies flourish. What the fuck are you talking about? I get the feeling you're trying to put one over on me. If that's the case, you're making a big mistake. Sorry about that. Look, there's no point in us aggravating each other. Let's both just go our separate ways. Don't move. We're not done yet. You wanted to be the knight in shining armor and save the damsel in distress. Let's see how brave you are. Someone threw you off balance and cost effort points increasing in your skills. Use the golden elixir to cure yourself. That ah, shit. Think about it. You know your head will roll tomorrow if you shoot. Wanna bet? Sure do. I'm not in the habit of beating Lord Mortimer's guest in his own salon. You got off easy this time, but don't try it again. I think I, I think I fucked that up. She dropped this ring now. Elizabeth was wearing. Huh. She was so frightened she was unaware that she'd lost it. Yeah, well, it didn't seem to do her much good. Did I use? I think I used up. Yeah. Hey, 
These look like pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia. There's a pattern with five circles on this chest. Retrieve everything. Oh, you retrieved everything. What's this? I thought I messed up with that guy's commendation because I was like, I don't know what to hit. <clears throat> Lady Adams must have locked it behind her when she fled. Time to search the room? Louis, I only needed ten minutes. Imagine the scandal if she had found me. What would you have done in my shoes? She was in the middle of an argument with some angry guy. Ten minutes? I didn't ask for the moon. Nonetheless, you found what you were looking for, didn't you? Not everything, but yes. Elizabeth is definitely the daughter of John Adams. We need more information. You can always go back. It's too late now. I feel like if I didn't step in, he'd be like, I can't believe you let a lady get hit. You bastard. certainly has a taste for staging ruins. What are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. How did it go with Miss Adams?
Don't worry about that anymore, Your Eminence. I had to step in, but everything's under control. <laughs> what an adventure, my son. <laughs> I'm relieved to hear it. You acted as a good Christian. In these troubled times, we need more men of your caliber. It's nothing, Your Eminence. I did what I had to do. Well, you did the opposite. Good. Well, thanks for the news. My son, I have another problem. I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the home? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Luis. Now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night. Louis, your strength from your objective. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I better go to bed. Well, I'll search my room tomorrow. If mother stayed here right before me. You never know. Mortimer had better show up. I got to fuck once again. I feel like that one's a pretty important one. <sighs> Another vision?
right. In my vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. Writing material. Inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. I haven't even had time to unpack my cases. Dear Monsieur de Richet, please. The torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. Buddy. something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Must be Piaggi's room. This room looks unoccupied. Byzantine Empire, a coin often used during the St. Louis era. Credulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio representing St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on but doesn't touch. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter. Look, markings on the floor. Uh, just a bit <coughs> worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. 
Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order, barely visible. Mother. You undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Come on, Louis, think. Think. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. <coughs> she must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? Hey. The message is illegible. I have to keep searching. Apart from getting the book dirty, I can't see any use for this. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richie to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it.
nothing. <clears throat> Spread ash on the books. here. I wouldn't mind a nice strong coffee though. I'm guessing spread the ashes and then the book won't mess here. It's no good. It might have worked if the writing had left marks in the paper, but no. There's only traces of lemon. Luckily, I've only put ash on part of the message. Aha! It's working! The heat reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, it could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition or mother's gonna kill me. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Hall requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. Judith beheading Holofernes. Ironic. Saint Jerome and the angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. The conversion of Saint Paul by Caravaggio. Saint Francis of Assisi in ecstasy before superior voices. It always amuses me to see how art gets used for propaganda purposes. The Last Judgment. Why do I always get the most terrifying room? The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio represented St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch. The torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. The inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. <clears throat> I 
I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. Washington. Let no one disturb me. I'm busy. Too bad. I'll see him later. Knock on his door again and run. Just... Oh, they can turn me around. That's the door to Elizabeth's room. For God's sakes, what happened in here? What happened in here? found a box containing some kind of white crystals. <coughs> These are magnesium crystals, a fairly effective remedy for easing anxiety. with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. Your writing is barely legible. Notes, analyze the notes. The note suggests binding the feet and hands, then blocking the jaws using a piece of cloth to prevent the tongue from being sectioned. That looks like a method to control an epileptic fit. I wonder if Elizabeth is the one being treated for that illness. to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and, unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please, excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother. She still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you'll be able to put all of this behind you one day.
a novel of the initiation of a young woman into polite society. June 11th, 1791. My dear Elizabeth, your last letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer matter to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last, right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. Abigail Adams. Johann von Wunder. Napoleon Bonaparte. be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. Sir Jacques Perru. The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm. That might come in handy. Hannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my room? And he gets victory after victory? The Battle of Alexander at Issus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. It's a beautiful weapon, a Levy Damask blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Paoli continues to steer our motherland, Corsica toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. French actor Talma is Nero Britannicus. The Amber Crystals. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January 
on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord... Which one is the golden elixir? Duchess Emily Hillsborough. What is that noise? Oh. It might be better to take a different stairway. Monsieur de Richet, I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. You didn't happen to lose this, did you? Where did you find it? In the small salon. It's the only reminder I have of my beloved sister. I thought that swine stole it from me. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes. Why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing, so I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice, her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? Elizabeth. Com Biting in me might ease your burden. Let me relieve you of some of your suffering. Relieve me? Do you even hear yourself? Do you really think that by confiding in my torturous son, I will be healed as if by magic? That it will bring my smile back, or let me sleep at night? Look, you don't seem like a bad person. And I'm sorry you have to find out your mother's true colors like this. But I'm not going to pity you. Everybody has their cross to bear. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. 
Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. Sure, he tried everything. To keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. I've got nothing more to say to you. Figure it out yourself. Ugh. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir so should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Mm, That's a lie. Except for my mother. Has Sir uh, another question? Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. In the west wing, on the second floor, are his private chambers. In the east wing, are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holmes, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Does sir have any more questions? What is outside on the island, exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help sir in any other way? Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. In the west wing, on the second floor, are his private chambers. In the east wing, are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holmes, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Does sir have any more questions? As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require?
What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend, sir, a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir, but I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps, sir, uh, would like to know something else? not in here. Friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Of course. Damn it. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> 
Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, I put some small oh, effort into the works. <laughs> the orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. This is the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Volner? Many believe he is the real leader of Prussian. A charming man, but with an iron fist and a velvet glove. I also know he's famous for his love of the hunt in all its forms. <laughs> Have you any information on this Napoleon? Right he was too. Yes, I heard what a Lord Mortimer has invited Napoleon along to negotiate an important commercial venture. Nothing strange about that. And the Golden Order is somehow involved. What? Not our order? Are you sure? That's what I read in the letter from Mortimer to Napoleon. Mm. This information is important. Mm. Thank you, Louis. Monsieur de Richer, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Of course. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannons. I don't know. Maybe you ought to speak to my mother. Oh, what a pity. I was hoping you would be up to the challenge. Too bad. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will 
propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words, and I agree. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation <coughs> of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> The last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. There's no alternative paths, and I guess that's good. Oh, so now I can do it and get politics up. Let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up.
Well, your eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Volner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that your eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing, your minutes. But... I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. <coughs> well, I, I must admit, Your Eminence, indeed it does worry me. <coughs> but continue to have faith in Sam. You'll see, I'm sure, that in a few days we'll all be laughing together. That's all I hope for, Your Eminence. But while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Go ahead. What can I do for you? If I said to you, where all eyes size you up, would it mean anything to you? I don't know if it's the place you're looking for, Louis. But it makes me think of the portrait gallery. There's a gallery here? Can you tell me where to find it? <clears throat> of course. Just go through the door at the end. It will lead into the library. Continue all the way through, and you'll end up in the gallery. You'll see it, Louis. When you get there, you'll know. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. On that last word, then... I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. <coughs> the lock is surrounded by a triple circle. Left. I'll retrieve it later. Royal jelly. All right, I've retrieved everything. Dining on ham. Well, that's very appetizing. crystals. Expressly forbade me from reading it. Well, Atrus, take it. The Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Two 
pages out of an old encyclopedia. Go and try to find the creature now. Liberty or Death by Regnaud. Oh, ah, painting by Ang. Molière dining with Louis XIV. The king's posture is surprising. It's almost as if he's addressing someone in the assembly. Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. The song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia. Ah, François Premier, receiving the Holy Family, a painting. Amber. The Fall of Phaeton, another painting by Rubens. Poor Phaeton, struck by lightning for borrowing. Amber. <clears throat> the Company by Rembrandt. A meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe Sank. I wonder why Mortimer is particularly fond of this painting. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. What the? They put his ding dong in there. A painting with no name. Medusa. Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. Thorn. I'll keep it. Man, she looks so sad. I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword. Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. The 
origin of myths, a reinterpretation of legendary creatures. Just what I need. The text is in French on the left-hand page and in Latin on the right hand. Let's find the chapter on the Medusa. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, I guess I did nothing. the organs. <coughs> ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the Gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. Light has got to be the distraction. Painting with no name. In Greek mythology, anyone who looked into the eyes of the Medusa turned to stone. So the monster's statue must be turned towards someone who could protect their eyes. It can only be the hero holding the shield. Emily, you scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I've discovered a hidden message from my mother. She explains how to find the secret room. Something must have attracted her here, so <clears throat> I've come to check it out. And you? What brings you here? My, you're curious. 
Let me guess. Go on then, impress me. You're looking for somebody. Your silence speaks volumes. I must have got it right, and you will go to great lengths to find them. So, this person means a lot to you. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah. In your dreams. At your service, madam. A golden fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. Want a rug? It'll warm you up. I wouldn't be caught dead in that horrible thing. <laughs> That's a pity. The gold color brings out your eyes. And your flattery brings out your boorishness. An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. I bet you've read them cover to cover. Naturally. Really? I'm curious. Tell me, what part stood out the most to you? The passage where Mary says to Joseph, Hey, you, shut up. In other words, you haven't even opened one. Mortimer is the author of this work. He talks about his passion for art. <coughs> this is Thursday. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's Laurel Reef. Stop! Don't put your grubby fat fingers on it. You find my fingers fat? <laughs> At least put on some gloves. Please note, my fingers are slim. You were going to leave marks. My God, what an amateur. Many a harpsichord player would love to have sexy fingers like mine. Tell me where you took your infiltration classes so I can have your tutor executed. Let's compare hands then. We'll soon see whose fingers are fattest. <laughs> no, I'm not going to compare hands with you. Let's just keep going. Bad loser. Looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. Brass quillings and knobs. A beautiful cruciform line. Judging by the wear and the technique used to forge it, this sword dates back to the Crusades. And it must have belonged to a wealthy knight. There's a date. MCXC. 1190. That's right. Forge for the Crusades. It really does look like Joan of Arc's sword. The famous Maid of Orléans. One of your favorite historical heroines. You bet. Given the number of English butts she kicked. And we all know where that got her. When you finished playing, maybe you can help me search the place? <laughs> he is 
something interesting. A manor in Maine, hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia, properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old, and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? Maybe Mortimer is immortal or capable of living for a very long time, like Methuselah. A first smile. Careful. Keep that up and soon you'll end up laughing. Carry on sprouting inanities like that, and indeed I might. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. Hey, Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. Find that ass. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? Mortimer's letter, my mother's message in the book, the Golden Order. What more do you need as proof of my goodwill? I freely admit that my wary side does get the better of me sometimes. Wary? Yeah, like a wild animal. Don't exaggerate. But that's what I like about you. I'll admit you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! <laughs> and I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? It's not politics. Let's take your subterfuge talents, for example. You can't make me believe you'd be very effective at sneaking around unobserved, dressed as you are in that puffy whalebone dress. I do find your outfits ravishing, but couldn't you use someone like me to perform certain discreet tasks? Louis, Louis, your naivety is almost touching. 
Since our arrival, I have been continuously exploring the island without anyone realizing. Know that in a man's world, it is sometimes more efficient to wear a dress with a daring décolletage than to know how to pick a lock. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? I know she already has a partner. She was working with my mother. It's crystal clear. You don't like people telling you what to do, and you do like giving the orders to everyone. If I were the matron you speak of, I would have found an underling to search this place, and I would be sound asleep in my bed. God damn it. I already have a work partner. I knew it. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me, but I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? No, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... It's as obvious as it is surprising. You're my mother's hard-hitting partner. Oh, God, do you really believe the nonsense that comes out of your mouth? Well, a second ago I did. A little. Sorry, Louis. Your mother is not my partner. Oh, my God. Okay. Remember how she was affected by the cameo. I don't want to keep using my jelly. Could be George Washington. Other no. Your sister. Fuck it. She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. Yes. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. When it comes to getting results, you are very good. I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant affected me so strongly. The I thought it belonged to Emma, 
My twin sister. Oh. Now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes. You can't imagine to what extent, though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day, we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. First for one, then for the other. We dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. This time, though, she went ahead, and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was, was meant to meet Sir home and bring back the details so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return for Mortimer's one week ago. The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from home, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So, my mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself. Or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. <clears throat> the only reason I went with sister was because I thought of the orphanage. I was like, okay, maybe there were two orphans and that's why her sister. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. Oh, she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please, don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. Jackpot! I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now, otherwise it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. All right. What have you got on your mind now? You've got to listen to what I have to say, while there's still time. You need to know the truth about your mother. About my mother? What do you mean? I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the clifftop and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognized my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis. I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you, it was her. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening! The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here! I'm telling you, it was her! Yes, I need something to calm me down. Mm. 
No thanks. I, I'd better not. Listen, if you want me to tell you everything, you have to drink with me, Louie. What I have to say to you is of the utmost importance. I'll drink with you, but let's go easy on it, okay? I don't know where she gets her rock cut from, but frankly, it's disgusting. You know, Louie, when I came here, it was in the hope of getting help. I've only just now realized that I've been drawn here into a trap. Alcohol's gone to my head. Here, the condemned's last drink. Elizabeth, alcohol never solves anything. I'm gonna stop now. Listen up. You want to know what your mother was capable of, right? You want to know the reason why? Well, you're gonna have to follow me to the bottom of the abyss, Louie. Either drink or get out. No, I won't drink. All right, Louie, then get the hell out of here. You're incapable of opening your eyes, so be it. Get out! Why the hell did I go with Elizabeth? I could have spent the night with Emily, but no. I had to go play the night with a big heart. Oh, well, never mind. Tomorrow's another day. Boo. I messed that up.
Ugh. And that was episode one. 